This reading is for Liam Bateman and Rusty Stone Rock. I want to thank them so much for their support, their continuing support, and their positive feedback, and their acknowledgement. It truly means everything, and it makes all the difference. All these poems were written very recently. This one was written yesterday. How's the weather? I think I heard her moan the other day. She'll deny it, but it was the first time I felt her lower her guard. It really surprised me. And of course, the next day, the fortress walls went back up. I'm good at words, and that's about it. I drive people away so quickly, I'm thinking I might change my name to Ben-Hur. Eliza does her best to keep her cards close to her chest, while I do my best to take a sneak peek whenever I possibly can. I like reading my poetry to her because I feel like she's really listening. In one way or another, we're all Egyptians, trying to make sense of the hieroglyphics on the papyrus and wood. When you said, you can't keep lying down on the phone with me if you're trying to keep it on a friend level, I knew for certain you were feeling something too. She gave me another chance after I was a complete jerk, and I know I must slow my roll and take all of my cues from her if I don't want to get blocked again. A sunrise greeted me from across the fields like a new morning or moonlight drive. As you can tell, I'm no good at this. But I just wanted you to know I like you a lot and hope someday you'll let me make it all up to you. Don't let it bring you down. When was the status quo ever right? And now that my mother is gone, I've got no one to live up to. We're not like normal people. When a train of words runs through our heads, we must do our best to capture some of that lightning in a mason jar. When I walk into a party, I'm immediately looking for the exit or a restroom to escape into. It has nothing to do with any addiction. I just prefer people to be invisible. Nothing short of a mushroom cloud should we allow ruin our day, because the orange horde is lessening each and every one of our lifespans, and nothing, nothing short of a bullet is going to help us out of this fucking mess. Don't worry about agreeing with me, because I, I don't want to make you an accomplice when the word police come and take us useless poets away. Go ahead, go ahead and try to show them beauty. And watch how quickly you're cut down. The last time the status quo opted to lick my asshole, I said, I'll pass. Because they never really get into the nooks and crannies. And always leave me feeling like a dissatisfied English muffin. The truth died the day Vonnegut stopped writing, or stopped drinking, or both. I'm going to keep smoking pot until I either get lung cancer or die from a green thumb. Red and white for Evie. We live for the music in our lives. It's trapped inside until we discover our true voice. All hell breaks loose through the assimilation of self in foreign bodies. I am listening to Otis Rush as I try to find the words before they escape or worse, die before they've lived. Your mother loves you. And I know this because the stars 
have told me so. I don't mean to be presumptuous or intend any disrespect as I press down on these keys. We freeze if we're unwilling to defrost the secrets in our Valentine heart muscles. I say I'm a writer or a poet or a troll living underneath a bridge. But none of those descriptions even begin to cover who I really am. Let's not pretend we know each other. But let's also not forget how much fun it was watching as Keith struggled with simply gassing up the Ford. We battle with the insensitivity of the loved ones around us as we become the adult and do our very best to get everyone onto the same page. It truly sucks having to always be the strongest and most together person in the room. But you know, Evie, when you're alone, you can lose it for seconds at a time. And that will keep you sane until you're called upon to again be the saint to a bunch of sinners. Red and white just made sense to her. And when you told me this, I started to get just how special your mother is. Stand your ground. Words are consequences. The division of right and wrong is not partisan. Both sides of the aisle is cooked up spin and divided we fall. Loosen the screws. Prisons are full of parole violators. Drive into the crowd and claim religious intolerance. At some point, making right at some point, might making right and determining policy needs to cease and desist. Our end game, our end game of the end always justifying the means doesn't amount to a hill of brown or black beans. Social justice has been hung out to dry as we're put back into chains and the truth has been sidelined by a man-child whose only plan of attack is distract, distract, distract. I want what's right. You want what's right. Or are we ready, are we ready to simply settle for what's convenient as we drive through yet another Starbucks and get our fix of designer caffeine and Hail Mary innuendos. Our word should mean more than just a Caesar salad. And our inability to squarely look our own foggy bottom reflections in the bloodshot eyes. Why is it so tough for liberals to push back on conservatives? It's most certainly not because the right has the left beat on the issues. I believe if we don't stand our ground sooner than later, we're going to lose more than just our consciences, consciences in this fight between the haves and have-nots. Are you willing to sell your country out for a few more votes? The Republicans are and did. Are you willing to just look the other way? As another human being is treated like they've no right to say anything when they're manhandled or even worse, raped into silence. Are you just going to stand there and do nothing? Or even worse, add your vote to a chorus of dissenting voices on not only the rule of law, but the rule of humanity in our closeted system of reprobates and soiled Bible salesmen. Hallelujah. I am here. I sit here and periodically I roll my mom to the bathroom and make her a little soup. 
She is eating just about nothing. Dementia. When I place my ear against my mother's skull and listen, and listen like she's a seashell at the seashore, I can hear the wind hollow, howling through her bones. I've been entrusted this gift, and I'm going to use it now. Sit still as a stiletto stabbing a topographic map and drain the pus from my atlas shrugged, 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 brainstem. Maybe, maybe, I'll strike it rich while panning for goblets of gold and empathy. Or maybe, maybe, I'll end up back on the Las Vegas strip at that Las Vegas rescue mission again. Let's keep this dementia between us. Because not all Manchurian candidates are ill-informed. And not every garden party has Mr. Hughes hiding in Dylan's shoes, wearing his disguise. I've stepped on bigger toes than yours. And though there's no doubt you could buy and sell me, what's the bloody point when everyone ends up buried beneath mounds of paperwork and shovelfuls of dirt? I can hear the train imploring my mother to either make up her mind or stop being kind and to simply call it a day. Dementia. Dementia must be taken seriously no matter how difficult it is to face. Matters of the heart are hard enough. But when it comes to the brain, too many people consciously or unconsciously check out. My mother is the toughest person I've encountered in this life. And even she, even she is helpless at the hands of this silent killer. I find myself drinking a lot of orange soda, Fago or Fanta. It does make a difference. Am I alive? I know I shouldn't have to ask, but sometimes it's hard to tell the living from the dead. The poetry pours from me like blood, semen, piss, and shit. It's not a sign of life, but sometimes you just have to take what you can get. Let's lose ourselves down the rabbit hole. Alice called. She wants her looking glass back. Jack the Ripper called and said, hey, thanks for not putting up too much of a fight. The Republicans have finally proven beyond the shadow of any doubt, party before country, no matter what, no matter who gets dead. It's the five-year anniversary of Sandy Hook. We mustn't celebrate our inability or ineffectiveness to make a difference. This goes triple for you. President Obama, who proved just how dangerous hope can be when used as a dowsing rod to locate a nation's sweet spot and then exploit it for their own political means. Are we alive? Does it matter if we're only normalizing our horror until the spilling of blood becomes our national pastime like the trafficking of children and the privatization of our morality. Proof of life is overrated, especially when the air is unbreathable, the water is undrinkable, and you are a ghost walking around in someone else's skin. I don't know how to grieve. Grieve. 
My mother died. I don't have a clue what to do with this intel. All my tears are conscientious objectors from another unobserved police action. I covered up her face with a white sheet. Then I uncovered her face so she could sing like a nightingale. I pray the check to the rabbi doesn't bounce. It did. Because I don't feel like going to hell today. <laughs> Thank God us Jews don't believe in hell. I don't know how to grieve properly or improperly. All my coping mechanisms have flown south for the winter. Tired of pretending I'm broken. Tired of wishing ill on others because I don't know how to build my own happiness. I want to repeat that. Tired of wishing ill on others because I don't know how to build my own happiness. I want to repeat that. Tired of wishing ill on others because I don't know how to build my own happiness. Tired of being tired. And I want to wake up and I want to walk away from all of this sadness. My mother is dead. My father has been out of the picture for quite some time. Picture perfect families only exist on TV and in our most warped of nightmares. Green. Grief and I have never quite seen eye to eye. When hospice called, I was inconsolable. Soon I stopped crying and a drought took hold like an absence like an absentee parent or a vengeful God. This poem is for Juliet, Baby Doll Mask, Baby Doll Mask. Sequined pain, streaming blood pageantries, rusted Midwest solilo soliloquies, 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 art witch seductress brainiac, bathroom stalled obsessive, sequined pain, streaming blood pageantries, rusted Midwest soliloquies, art witch seductress brainiac, bathroom stalled obsessive as for you Juliet this last poem is entitled life this is my special hat that Linda gave me life isn't measured by clocks my heart's beating like a grandfather clock missing its grandmother clock time sits on my face like a Jewish ghetto in Warsaw, in Europe, during World War II. Nothing going right as our possessions are stripped from us, as storefront windows are smashed in, and if we are blessed, attics become our only safe refuge. Caste systems are fucking bullshit, as is anyone acting superior because of their supposedly pure blood. Go ahead and burn a cross on my front lawn because I can no longer be associated with white people and all the privilege that they perpetuate in the name of God. We ran the Native Americans off their land because we wanted it for ourselves and wiped out the buffalo for sport and none of it, even today, makes a lick of sense as we celebrate a rainbow coalition and go on and on about what we are thankful for. Trading punches with a champ or trading punches with another loser that pretends they're undefeated when actually the fights they're fighting are like taking candy from a big disgruntled baby. 
learning more and more that giving up control is the only way out of this place. As abandonment issues rear their ugly head and disassociation zaps you like a bolt. I wanted, I wanted to love you, or at least like you, for who you are, until realizing you're not even close to what you seemed, as a biblical flood wrecks havoc, wreaks havoc on our TikTok lives. My heart's beating like a hammer right out of my play, Playboy centerfold chest as I attempt to dial back my rage and stop dressing you down for your unwillingness to change. I want to read that again. My heart's beating like a hammer right out of my Playboy centerfold chest as I attempt to dial back my rage and stop dressing you down for your unwillingness to change. Time repeatedly sticks its fingers up my ass like a proctologist with ADHD. And I'm, I'm none the wiser because I'm always up for a challenge, especially when it comes from the back end. Nothing going right. As I listen, as I listen to the Gestapo wind and wish I was more than just a wooden puppet who wishes he were a real boy. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Liam, and thank you, Rusty. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Joni. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Chrissy, Marilyn, Evie, Eliza, Tommy, Squid. Everybody I'm forgetting. Thank you.